Statistically speaking, the Wild West wasn't quite as wild as pop culture would have us believe. But it wasn't without its risks. Quick draw duels, rattlesnake bites, and other dangers made the West a tough place to survive. And while we all like to think we'd be among the ones who made it, today we're going to take a look at how you, yes, you, would have died in the Wild West. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other aspects of Wild West life you would like to hear about. Oogie okay, partners, draw. Quick draw duels happen so frequently in westerns, you'd think street vendors would be wearing body armor. But in reality, duels like the ones in movies, where two men stand on a dusty road, count off, then trigger pull from the hip, rarely happened at all. And when they did, duels were not inspired by a challenge. Usually, they were just the result of boredom and alcohol, and played out as brief, clumsy affairs that took place while both men were running for cover. As for quick draws, Wyatt Earp, one of the West's most famous lawmen, once wrote, The most important lesson I learned was the winner usually was the one who took his time. And speaking of Mr. Earp, Wyatt Earp and his brothers ran the tough-as-nails town of Tombstone, so it was inevitable they would eventually run into trouble. That trouble turned out to be the Clanton McClory Gang, a group of rustlers that lived outside of town. And if you were a member of that gang, you would have stood shoulder to shoulder with your cohorts as they got you involved in one of the most infamous incidents in the history of the West. Unless you were Skippy Clanton, the cowardly brother who pretended to be sick that day. Way to be a team player, Skippy. Tensions reached a breaking point on October 26, 1881, when the two factions faced off in a vacant lot adjacent to the now famous OK Corral. Like Han and Greedo, the record is fuzzy as to who shot first. But either way, three members of the Clanton McClory gang were dead within 30 seconds of the first attack. Skippy, uh, we owe you an apology. One of the best rodeo men in the West, Bill Pickett was famous for performing an absolutely bonkers stunt called bulldogging, where he would leap from the back of a horse onto a wild steer, then wrestle the animal to the ground. And you have trouble sending a strongly worded email. Born in the 1870s, Pickett was also one of the few Wild West legends who lived long enough to be immortalized on film. He did two movies, though no reliable footage of him wrestling steers is known to have survived. Another thing that didn't survive was Bill himself whose life came to an end on April 2, 1932. A horse he was trying to rope kicked him down and trampled him, sending Bill off to the great rodeo in the sky. Just because you were famous in the Wild West doesn't mean you had it easy. Martha Jane Canary, better known as Calamity Jane, was a beloved figure of the era. Considered a fierce adversary and compassionate caretaker, she was closely associated with Wild Bill Hickok. After he was infamously gunned down while playing cards, she stayed in Deadwood, possibly hoping that someday she would be included as a character in the HBO show. She then suffered a string of brutal disappointments. People took advantage of her fame, and her alcohol use spiraled past the point of control. Shortly before her death in 1903, the Sioux Valley News ran an item about her that read, When, to put it very plain and ugly, she gets drunk, she tries to terrorize the town in good old frontier style. But that sort of thing has been outgrown with a lot of other things. And so Jane finds herself in the lockup where she is now, among the plain drunks. In her final years, she was a laundry worker before finally passing from pneumonia in a hotel room just a few miles from Deadwood. For her request, she was buried next to Wild Bill, who, by all accounts, probably would have rather been playing cards. It could get lonely out in the West, so you might be forgiven for seeking a little comfort in one of the saloons along the trail. That being said, most of the customers didn't have an understanding of safe sex practices. Penicillin was unknown at the time, and venereal disease spread easily. Wild Bill Hickok, for example, allegedly had urinary troubles and diminishing eyesight, two symptoms of STDs like chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis. The symptoms plagued him, but they were nowhere near as bad as the cures he was prescribed, one of which involved inserting a metal wire into his urethra then heating the wire. We can't imagine how many patients actually made it to step two.
Wild Bill Hickok rose to national fame through sensationalized articles describing his dangerous exploits. But after accidentally taking a deputy's life and hanging up his holster, Hickok immediately took up the next most dangerous hobby he could think of, gambling. One day, a man named Jack McCall joined Hickok's Deadwood poker game. Hickok proceeded to take McCall to the cleaners, winning hand after hand. At the end of the game, Hickok gave McCall a little money for dinner and sent him on his way with no hard feelings, or so he thought. The next day, Hickok joined a game and sat with his back to the door, something he usually tried to avoid. McCall entered the saloon, walked right up to the back of Hickok's chair, and ended the famed cowboy's life. And that is how you call someone's bluff. Imagine you set out from Independence, Missouri in May of 1873 with a wagon full of supplies and your small family. You're following the famous Oregon Trail, like in that famous video game, The Oregon Trail. When you hit Fort Laramie, however, you start developing a nasty cough. You really hope it's from inhaling dust on the trail, because the other options ain't great. Dysentery and diphtheria were present throughout the West, but cholera was the real threat. There was little sanitation to speak of, and it spread unchecked through contaminated food and water. The first warning sign was severe diarrhea, followed by dehydration and ultimately kidney failure. Wagon trains and settlements dreaded cholera outbreaks, which were capable of wiping out half of their numbers if left unchecked. While some doctors understood the cause of diseases like cholera, they were few and far between in the West. Consequently, the most common form of containment was quarantine, which meant the infected were left to fend for themselves, often succumbing on the trail. So, naturally, they turned this experience into a video game for third graders. If you were a member of the Camp Grant Apaches, you would have survived brutal aggression at the hands of American forces before settling into an uneasy peace with nearby settlers. But as anyone who's ever seen a map of the U.S. could tell you, that peace wouldn't last. On April 30th, 1871, a group of Tohono O'odham Native Americans, white settlers, and Mexicans descended on the Camp Grant Apache tribe. They took as many as 150 lives and captured children to be sold as slaves in Mexico. Their actions were a response to a series of raids in the Tucson area, despite the fact that the Camp Grant Apaches had nothing to do with those raids. After news of the incident got out, President Ulysses S. Grant demanded the Arizona Territory Governor seek justice. After 100 assailants were put on trial for 107 murders, the jury returned a not guilty verdict in just 19 minutes. Long on swiftness, short on justness. If you, like Jesse James, led a crew of ruffians, you would have survived plenty of attempts to bring you down. But it's hard to keep that kind of thing up forever. In 1881, a group of railroad companies collectively put out a $10,000 bounty for both Jesse and his brother Frank. Equivalent to roughly $300,000 in 2024, the amount proved too tempting for a man who had grown close to James in recent months, Robert Ford. Ford's brother Charlie was part of the posse, but the prospect of both a reward and a pardon for past misdeeds proved too tempting for him, too. Jesse James trusted the Ford brothers and invited them to move into his house in St. Joseph, Missouri. Terrified of Jesse's legendary reflexes, the brothers waited until he took off his coat and set his holster aside. When he did, Robert shot him. The Ford brothers were pardoned for the deed and eventually got the money from the railroad companies. Robert would subsequently be immortalized as a coward in the 2007 Brad Pitt movie, The Assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. That's how people introduce you, Robert? Ouch. Just because you were a Wild West bandit doesn't mean you were a legend like Jesse James. More likely, you were just an everyday ruffian arrested after a robbery gone wrong or an argument that went too far, keeping your fingers crossed for a good old-fashioned hanging. Why? Because hanging was actually one of the more merciful sentences in the Wild West criminal justice system. The goal of a hanging was to have the impact of the fall break the offender's neck, thereby giving them an instantaneous and relatively painless end. Of course, not everything always goes as planned. Tom Blackjack Ketchum, for example, grew to around 200 pounds by the time he ascended the gallows. When they finally dropped him, the rope was tight enough that it completely separated his head from his body. Hey, we said it was relatively painless.
Born in 1809, Kit Carson was a frontiersman with a reputation for being an absolute beast in a fight, and he cheated fate a dozen times, whether sparring with other trappers, crossing the Mojave, or weathering blizzards in the Rocky Mountains. Frontier life wore him down, though, and by 1868, he was in poor health. That same year, his seventh child was born, but complications from the delivery took the life of his wife, Josepha just two weeks later. This loss seemingly broke Carson's will to live, and he passed one month later when an aneurysm burst in his trachea. Or as a doctor who minored in poetry would say, he died of a broken heart. If you were Charles Earl Bowles, also known as Black Bart, then congratulations! You were arguably the most successful cowboy of the entire Old West. No, really? Well done. Bowles held up a total of 28 stagecoaches between 1877 and 1883, and he did it with style and charm. Black Bart had the reputation of a gentleman, emptying strong boxes but never shaking down passengers for their money. There were even reports that the outlaw would leave verses of poetry behind at the scene of his crimes. Is it too late to join his fan club? Of course, that didn't stop him from getting caught. He spent four years at San Quentin, and upon his release, Bowles was asked if he would return to his old ways. He replied, No, gentlemen, I'm through. And he kept his word. After his release, Black Bart emptied out his hotel room and simply disappeared, vanishing into myth. Hey, sometimes happy endings do happen, even in the wild, wild west. So what do you think? How long will you have made it in the west? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our Weird History.